Look, it's no secret I'm an old fart. I'm really not into trends anymore. And I really thought as a teen that I wasn't going to be like that. Well, once you reach my age, you soon start realizing just how hard it is to keep up with trends, and you more or less realize just how boring or uninteresting they can sometimes be. Thankfully, I'm dating someone who's about 16 years younger than me and still uses TikTok, so every now and again I'm informed by my girlfriend about exactly what is going on in the world of Zoomers, and recently she told me about this one movie that's gotten TikTokers all around the world shaking in their boots and squeeing their eyeballs out, and that being a small little indie darling known as Megan is Missing. Seriously, if you go anywhere on TikTok, chances are you've seen someone either mention the film or warn you about the film. It's the film that shocked everyone, that's traumatized the world, that's gotten people so shook that they can't even finish the film. It's a horrendous, shocking, terrifying, other buzzwords inserted here, an all-around disturbing movie that no one can be prepared for. So of course, with Jelly and I having a penchant for violence and gore and death and disturbing bullshit, we of course were excited by the prospect of something new and possibly something good. We're huge horror buffs and we've pretty much seen it all, so something like Megan is Missing sounded like something right up our alley. Especially since we were told there are two very traumatizing photos associated with the film, two photos known to disturb and shock the audience to their very core. So horrifying in fact that the director and writer himself, Michael Goy, had to warn TikTok users that this might traumatize them. Oh boy, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, the movie's garbage, actually. I know now why Zoomers on TikTok kept saying, don't watch this movie. It's cause it's actually fucking bad. Nah, but seriously, this movie's trash. Anyways, I don't wanna be a reductive asshole like 99% of YouTubers are when they critique something. I wanna critique this movie and give it honest feedback, even though in some ways it probably doesn't deserve it. Though, we'll get into why in just a second. Firstly, let's get this out of the way. No, the movie is not a real found footage film. I think it's sort of charming, the amount of TikTok users that are actually believing that this is real. It sort of reminds me of back when everyone thought the Blair Witch was real. But then again, the acting in Blair Witch Project was way more believable than what's here. And that's mainly due to the fact that most of what you saw in the movie wasn't really acting but real reactions from the actors as they weren't really given a script or anything, just directions on what to do next. I am seriously fucking positive these were not here. How would we have, like, just made a campsite in between three piles of rocks just by coincidence? This, however, does have a script. A very poorly written, flat, and out of touch script, which was read by very amateur actors that really weren't that good, to put it nicely. We'll get more into that later, but first, let's actually talk about the premise of this film. Essentially, it's a lost footage style film which dictates the conversations and interactions between Megan Stewart, a troubled teen with the tendency to party, take drugs, and fuck everything that has a pulse, and a Amy Herman, the polar opposite of Megan, who is surprisingly her closest friend. Amy acts more like the main character than Megan does. She's much more reserved, quiet, and just overall a very nice kid. It's really kind of hard to think that these two are actually friends. Megan has a trash heap of friends, while Amy has none. Everyone who's friends with Megan pretty much hates Amy, and for seemingly no other reason than she's just not a fucking loser like the rest of them. Honestly, I want to call this movie unrealistic in the portrayal of some of these teens, but in reality, there are definitely teenagers like this who are just as shitty and if not worse than the kids portrayed here. Honestly, teens can just be horrible people for no reason other than they had a bad childhood or they just can't be bothered with being a good person. Lots of people always criticize the portrayal of teens in the media, but this is pretty accurate. You'd be surprised just how shitty teenagers really are. The one thing that isn't realistic is the dialogue itself, which was clearly written by a middle-aged man who hasn't spoken to a teen in probably 40 years. Oh hey, look. I was, I was right about that. It's just the way these kids act out their lines. It's just so weird that all they talk about is just sex and drugs and making out and they deliver it in such an awkward way. It doesn't help that the actors themselves are amateurish and, well, ain't no better way of saying this, just not very good at acting at all. And I don't want to blame the actors. This is the first time they've acted. They, they had prior gigs, yeah, but in commercials rather than big movies. They haven't really done anything to this extent. 
Not only that, but the actresses are, well, young. And despite what many of you might believe, not all child actors are very good. Nowadays, that might be different with hit films or series coming out every day showing off these incredibly talented kids, yet we shouldn't expect them all to be great. They're inexperienced, and it's not their fault that the writing was terrible. They worked with what they had, and I'm sure they did the best that they could, especially considering that this was filmed within a week, and I'm sure they had limited retakes, and I'm sure the director didn't even know what he was doing either. It's that quick and dirty tactic a lot of indie filmmakers do when they want to record stuff in a limited amount of time with a limited budget. And seeing as how this film must have had the budget of a gummy worm, I'd say the quality of what you see is what you get. Anyways, poor acting aside, I cannot stress just how bad the writing is. Forget the dated and awkward dialogue between the teens, so many of them are incredibly unlikable. Even Megan, to some extent, is an unlikable character, despite her being our main reason to care. The movie is called Megan is Missing, after all, so there should be some degree of care given to her as a character, right? Well, it's really hard to find her likable, but she did eventually grow on me. If not for just the existence of Amy, who is her better half. I kind of like these two, as unbelievable as it seems that they could be friends. Amy's a real sweet kid, and by proxy, she makes Megan more, well, empathetic. And we can kind of see her faults being just that faults. She didn't choose to be this kind of girl. It's just by circumstance of her past abuse that she's become this way, this sex-driven, drug-written kid. There's also that glimpse that she's not straight off so far from this path of being a good kid, as it's mentioned that she is an honor roll student. Actually, come to think of it, I do remember a lot of kids back in high school and middle school who made the honor roll that were also kind of fucked up. Yeah, they were the kind of kids that, by all means, should be considered extremely nerdy by just how studious they were and how smart they actually are. But somehow, some way, they gained the reputation of being the type of girl to sleep around with everyone or the type of guy that does a ton of drugs. It's weird, ain't it? That being said, I fucking hate these stupid little troglodytes. You suck. You suck. And you definitely fucking suck. I wish the kidnapper dude kills you harder than anyone. It's weird, because even before the kidnapping happens, you kind of cheer for the bad guy to go on a Michael Myers-esque killing spree and kill off these unlikable characters more than these characters you kind of like a little bit. But hey, fuck that, let's punish the main characters just for existing. Ugh. Yeah. So we can't ignore the main point of this movie, which is that, eventually, Megan gets kidnapped. This is the part of the movie that starts to get far more disturbing, and, you know, it's around this time you'd figure that it'd get better. I mean, up until now, it's just sort of been an infuriating film about a girl getting slapped and insulted for just being nice, I, I guess. Dude, you're definitely not a teenager, why the fuck- Anyways. This is the point where things should get interesting. Megan meets this cute guy online named Josh. They talk, they get to know each other. Josh uses pretty much the most basic manipulation tactics ever. Although to be fair, Megan has such a low self-esteem that she pretty much fall with anyone that says they love her immediately. And she even admits to that at some point. Josh says they should meet up behind a fucking diner next to a dumpster. I mean, okay. I know your self-esteem is bad, but it's super shady to meet someone behind a diner. I mean, you're not... You're not dumb, are you? I mean, well, whatever. Anyway, she meets up with Josh, and then Megan is never seen again. This is the part of the film where things really die down, and then ramp up immediately, and then die down really quick, and then ramp up again. It's... it's... The structure really isn't this movie's strong suit. Things just sort of happen. Even after Megan gets kidnapped, literally nobody around her gives a shit. Even her friend Amy, who's her closest pal, is just like this sort of mood of like, well, that's, that's a bummer. Oh well. Seriously, your friend is gone. Give a bit of motion more than just a blank stare. And it's not even that she's been gone for about like a day or two by this point. Everyone knows she's gone missing, and it's been weeks. At any rate, things start to take a turn for the comedic as this new segment pops up in the film, which is sort of like a hybrid between a current affair and unsolved mysteries. I guess this is the news? I don't know. Anyways, I hate these segments. I hate them so fucking much. They are so... Badly made, poorly edited. I mean, look at this. Look at this news crawl right here at the bottom of the screen. It's not even aligned to anything. It's just running freely wherever the fuck it wants to go. 
And is this the news? Like seriously, let's get down to it. Why would they show a news crawl if this isn't the fucking news? There is a segment that shows a news broadcaster like interviewing other people and having a microphone and being professional, but this is like drama or something. I don't know. Also, for some reason, this lady has an obsession with Megan, always calling her beautiful and never failing to emphasize on that word. Tonight on Missing, a beautiful teenage girl. Megan Stewart, a beautiful, popular 14-year-old girl. This beautiful young girl, brutal abduction of a beautiful young girl. I'm not sure if this is some sort of social commentary on people's obsession with how a kidnapped person looks or something. I just think it's real awkward and it's a dumb piece of dialogue that I can't help but think is distracting. Seriously though, these segments suck. Every time they interview someone, the interview lasts, I swear, less than a second. It's like so pointless. This would have been the perfect time to flesh out these characters a bit more and show their true colors, either by having them be manipulative in front of the cameras and acting like they give a shit about Megan when throughout the entire story we learn that they kind of don't give a shit, or have a twist, make it seem like the characters actually do care by giving them the spotlight and having them pour their hearts out about how much they miss her. It would have been uncharacteristic, sure, but why even have these segments at all if you're not even going to give the characters a time to shine, which is the perfect time to have them shine. Oh, whatever, man. I, I, I don't know. Okay. Anyways, why not just make it the local news, by the way? Not this weird hybrid of gossip and news. My favorite part was when they recreate the security cam footage and did a dramatization of the events. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be funny or not, but I thought this shit was hilarious. Even so, intentional or not, this is so fucking weird to see because I shit you not, like 30 seconds later, you see these two horrifying, disturbing, nightmare inducing, traumatizing, whatever fucking buzzword TikTok users are saying about the photos in this film. Are you ready to see these two horrible images that scar the lives of oh so many teenagers? You sure? Yeah? Alright, well, here it is. Wow, it's pretty spooky. In all fairness, it is pretty shocking to see, and I can see how a kid can be scared by this sort of image. Uh, you know, especially since they're presented with no music whatsoever, and the build-up to the images are pretty nerve-wracking, as it gives you this context that they were found online in the deep web or in, in some fetish forums and nobody's ever seen them before, and it's a pretty nice build-up, I'm not gonna lie. And all you can do is just brace yourself for the images because you know that they're going to come soon and whatever it is, you know is gonna be horrible. It's pretty well done, even if I have seen much worse from other pieces of media. But again, I cannot stress how stupid it is to see these two admittingly shocking images after this absolutely goofy dramatization section. There's honestly a time and place to show these kinds of segments, and I feel like this is neither the time <laughs> nor the place. I mean, that, that how can I take that seriously? That is what I say to myself while I was watching this entire movie, actually. How can I take any of this seriously? Did you know that this was supposed to be marketed as an educational film? Like, this is supposed to be like real life, uh, stranger danger kind of PSA video movie thing, whatever. Seriously, I'm not kidding. That's how they marketed this. This sort of shit. It really breaks the flow of the movie, which is supposed to be a sort of this drama and suspenseful kind of film about a girl who fell in love with an online stranger and was groomed to be sent off and to be kidnapped and whatever, but the interaction she has with Josh it's so very minimal that it's really not even worth it. There's more emphasis on the party they had earlier in this horrible abandoned shack that probably Slipknot practices in, and it's it just happens like for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's just like a very uncomfortable amount of time, and then all of a sudden she meets Josh, and the next 5 minutes or 10 minutes is just them getting to know each other, and hey, she's kidnapped, she's gone now, who cares, anyways, bye. It would have been better if they heavily emphasized how grueling actually groom their victims or this relationship that they actually have going on. I know they only had a week to film, but come on, you really should focus on the quality of the film and not how fast you can pump it out. It just sort of seems greedy to me and it doesn't feel right that this was supposedly an educational film when it's clearly not and it's more exploitive than it is anything else. But of course, that's not even mentioning the worst part of the film, which is, of course, the final 20 minutes of torture porn, which 
I can't even describe it as anything else. Not even kidding. It's just torture porn for the last 20 minutes. As soon as you see these images, you see Amy vlogging at that familiar place where she usually has her teddy bear. And then all of a sudden this hand comes in and she is kidnapped right there. Broad daylight. It's under a bridge fairly enough, but whatever. Anyways, these last 20 minutes are pretty disturbing. This is the part of the film that a lot of people say they can't get through. And I can honestly see why. I think it's unfair for me to say, oh, I've seen so much worse. Kids these days don't know shit about horror movies. I've seen the worstest things ever. I've seen Serbian film. I've seen that one movie with that image of God or whatever giving birth. Who cares? These kids don't know anything. I've seen horrible stuff. You gotta realize for just a second that a lot of these TikTok users, it's their first time watching something this brutal. The torture horror genre sort of fell around, you know, the mid 2010s. You'll see them here and again, sure, but they've gotten a lot softer nowadays. The last time I could remember a recent movie that I kinda see as a torture thriller film was Truth or Dare, which was just trash and nowhere near the spectacle other torture films were back in the 2000s when Saw made it such a popular genre. I can even see how if you're into horror movies nowadays that this might get you a little bit rattled because again, it's not like your average horror film where the scares come from that spooky boogeyman ready to get you with that good old jump scare. It's a slow crawl to the main event, which is this pretty grisly climax that shows in every detail the torture, rape, and eventual murder of Amy Herman. It isn't pleasant to watch, and it is, by all means, disgusting, gratuitous, and tasteless. See, the thing I failed to mention about this movie is that it claims to be based on true events. Which is one of those things a ton of movies say when they want to grab you by the ass and get you interested. When in reality, saying a film is based on true events is about as compelling as saying, based on that one rumor a friend of a friend told me about. Seriously though. Don't bother looking it up. There isn't a specific story that this film is based on, but rather multiple crimes and instances of kidnappings and murders that inspired the director, Michael Goy, to write the film. So basically them saying that it's based on a true events or true story or whatever is as tactless as Halloween saying based on a true story. Which story? I don't know, the one about the murder. Which murder? Pick your flavor, who cares? It, ooh. My point is, while there's not one particular case this movie is based on, this film does serve as a cautionary tale of grooming and online predators. It's just a shame that these last 20 minutes are more exploitive in nature than they are helpful in any way. I understand that the point of these last few minutes were to shock the audience and to show the true dark nature that some humans possess, yet I'd argue that this part of the film was made just as the real teeth sink of this film. Let's face it, we're all here for the last 20 minutes. Part of, if not all of, the allure of this film would be on the last scene. And it's because of that, for me at least, that it sort of muddies the message of the film for me by a lot. I think we can get across this message of how horrible this person is without needlessly going through this uncomfortable yet relatively tamed climax. Seriously, the, the worst torture she got was water thrown on her. Yeah. Okay. Again, I can't fault teens for being scared of this, but personally, I've seen worse. And the way certain parts were shot, I don't know, it just sort of seems weak and seems to exist solely for shock value. I don't want to come off as someone who is a sort of sensitive snowflake who can't handle torture or rape scenes and by no means am I offended by this, but as someone who has seen this sort of stuff before in other movies, I can honestly recognize when a film is only trying to be shocking instead of actually being shocking. Hmm, um, what's something that could shock people who watch this? Oh, I know, how about raping the girl who's the only character that they've liked this entire time? Yeah, that'll be cool, let's show a bloody finger on the camera so we can really emphasize how terrible this scumbag is. Yeah, just bend over, sweetie. The scene will be done by any moment. <sighs> You know, this whole sexual assault scene, man, I can't tell you just how gross it is. I mean, I've never really liked rape scenes in movies anyways, but 
I mean, who the fuck does? But I can understand that through a narrative perspective, they're made to emphasize our hate towards a villain or our sympathy for the character. Though, oftentimes, when these scenes exist, they exist with the intent of letting the bad guy get what he or she deserves, or at the very least, illustrates the trauma the main character goes through. None of which happens in this film. The bad guy doesn't get caught, and the main character just gets killed afterwards. Spoilers. Sure. Again, it happens to the nicest character too. The one we actually like. The one who deserves this the least. Like, why would we even want to sympathize any further with her? We already feel for her in her journey to find her friend and all that horrible shit that has already happened to her. I mean, why have this scene in general? You know, it reminds me of this one scene in Kill Bill where the bride, Uma Thurman, is violated by this one guy named Buck and some other asshole. It's not shown in gratuitous detail just how it is that she's violated, but it's assumed that during her coma she's been violated multiple times and probably a few times by Buck himself. And so what happens? Well, that guy gets his tongue ripped off and Buck gets his head caved in multiple times until he's deaded. BOOM! Fuck you, Buck! That's probably just the sadistic side of me who loves to see bad guys get fucking demolished for all the horrible shit they do, and I recognize that not all bad guys get what they deserve, especially in films based on reality where criminals sometimes get away with what they do. But regardless, there's nothing about these scenes that are tastefully done. It's based on fiction. I still feel like the message can be brought clearly just by showing a few scenes of brutality rather than seemingly glorify the torture she gets. It's also not fair for the actress herself. Sure, the guy who gets to do the raping is never seen on camera, but the girl is full blown right there in front of the camera. And I'm sure you guys think, well, she agreed to this part of the scene. I know she thinks that this is just part of the act and she's professional about it. And you're probably right, but she is a young actress, an underage actress actually. And I'm willing to bet that she would do this scene just because it's the prospect of getting into a big movie. I mean, it's an indie film that's way bigger than doing a commercial. So I would be willing to bet that she would want to do this scene, not because she wants wants to, but because she's desperate enough to have any sort of acting gig. Though that is a baseless assumption, that happens many times in Hollywood. More times than you would probably think and comfortably want to know. And if you think I'm exaggerating by saying this scene is a glorification of torture, rape, and murder, keep in mind that these last few minutes were shot by the murderer himself. It's through his perspective, and in many ways it's an empowering move for him rather than it is shocking as a cautionary film for us. I just think by the end of the day, this is an unhealthy way to portray the true crimes that happen to real life victims and it's more of a lazy and cheap way to get your audience to be appalled and shocked. I think these last 20 minutes could work, but there's so little done and very little effort given to it that I can't help but wonder if the intent of the message is true, that this is a film meant to teach you about stranger danger, which I just can't see how it is. I think it should have shown more victims and emphasized their struggles more instead of having the main bad guy do whatever he wants and torture them in front of the camera. Maybe even the kidnappings of these other friends of Megan. Maybe torture them on camera instead of Amy so that way we can sort of justify the torture scenes because they're happening to really awful characters. But simultaneously, we can also deliver the message that nobody deserves this as the gruesome and brutal tortures continue and get worse and worse and these awful girls we had no feeling towards and kind of wish that they had this coming to them start sobbing, begging for forgiveness, talking about their backstory, you know, apologizing to Amy, you know, humanizing the characters that we pretty much think are just 2D cardboard cutouts of bad girl teenagers. All the while, Amy ends up finding a way to escape while the other two girls are unfortunately killed in the process. This leads to the end of the film where Amy is able to come back home with her camera, minimal harm done to her or at least caught on camera anyways, and then we get to end the film with a blurb that states that the killer slash kidnapper was never found and police are still having this ongoing investigation continue in wherever they live. That would have been a much more chilling ending, knowing that the killer is still out there, even despite one of the girls he tortured surviving, which goes to show that even then, justice can't always be guaranteed. 
<sighs> but of course, that would have required an actual good writer. I don't know. It's just such a sour taste in my mouth, and I, I, I don't see how anyone other than people who are into this sort of brutal fret of th th <laughs> I got a fat fucking mouth. I don't see how anyone other than people who are into this sort of brutal fetishistic shit can be into it. What sucks is that even in the ending, nothing happens. And I don't just mean the kidnapper is never found or brought to justice or anything like that, but literally the movie just ends as soon as the camera stops recording, as soon as Amy Herman is sent down that hole and after she's begging and crying and screaming and just begging for anyone to help that brutal five minutes of the last part of the film, even after all of that and they find the camera in the fucking garbage can, there's nothing. There's no end sequence showing everyone's reaction, more importantly the friends and family's reaction, there's no update to the story for this weird broadcast show, I don't know what it is, there's, there's no update blurb or anything like that, it's just nothing. It's not like they don't find the evidence, they do, like I said, they find it in the trash can, so everyone should know the fate of these girls, yet for some reason, there is no follow up. I get this movie was only filmed for a week, but come on now. How can you just end it like this? Like, you could have just edited, like, added text that said, I don't know, Amy's family or, or Megan's family have given up the search after finding out that their kids have died or whatever. It's just nothing. It's just so very lazy. It really makes the last 20 minutes just meaningless and, ugh. Uh, it's just, what's, what was the point of it all? I don't like it. I just don't like it. <sighs> Alright, well, I no doubt left a sour taste in your mouth, and I am sorry for that. Though if this sort of film is for you, then hey, that's for you. I personally think this could have been done way better, more tastefully, and in some ways more respectively without being straight up internet bad, ooga booga sort of propaganda. Yes, online predators exist, yes, these sort of murderers exist, but I think this movie aims to scar people than it is to educate them. I mean, you gotta be real far up your ass if you really think this film is in any way educational. <sighs> At any rate, i like to end this off, this really long video by the way, sorry about that, with some recommendations of my own. Films that I feel can scratch that itch that some of you might be craving for. If you're looking for weird, disturbing, or even found footage type of films. I'll even recommend a movie that I feel is better encompassing the psychological torture and true horror that a kidnapping and sexual assault can bring. First up, let's talk weird and disturbing. Eraserhead. It's a film by David Lynch, and it's far more experimental than it is disturbing, but there are a ton of visuals and messages given to this film that can really shake you up. It's hard to describe what the film really is, but if I can describe it symbolically, I'd say it's a movie about the fears we have about fertility and the idea of being parents. Really, the less I say about it, the more engaged you'll be, so check it out. Next one I doubt most of you have seen, Holy Mountain by Alejandro Jodorowsky, a visionary filmmaker who has made some of the most surreal movies ever to be produced. This and El Topo has inspired me as a writer, and I truly love these films for what they are, because trying to dissect them for what they could be is totally missing the point on why they exist. Yeah, I know, I sound pretentious, and I haven't even told you about what, it, what it's all about. It, it, just trust me, when I say this film is pretty cool, I mean it's pretty cool, yet it does have some brutal scenes that'll disturb you way more than Megan is Missing did. Trust me, it's fucked up. Next. If you're into found footage-esque films, I, I really cannot recommend Lake Mungo and Noroi the Curse highly enough. These are some of the greatest and scariest movies I've personally ever seen, with Lake Mungo probably being number one. Though, be warned, Lake Mungo is also probably the slowest film I've ever seen. These two films focus on paranormal encounters also, so if you're not really into that, then it's probably not for you. But seriously, if you want to watch some amazing found footage movies and are sick of being recommended Blair Witch Project, then by all means, watch Lake Mungo. As for Noroi, 
I think it's well done as a ghost movie and if you're into ghost videos or ghost encounters or any sort of YouTuber who does like ghost type content, you'll probably never find a better mockumentary ghost film out there than Naroy the Curse. I want to do a full video on Naroy, so hopefully I'll get to do that someday, but I, I seriously highly recommend it. It's about a guy who's really into the occult and is specifically chasing after this one curse or this one ghost or paranormal activity that he's really dedicated his life to finding out more about and it's really just a great mystery slash horror film and it's it's just wonderfully well done i i love it finally the last movie i want to recommend is room no not the tommy wiseau film the room but just room it's an incredible film that really emphasizes the true struggles of someone going through a kidnapping. I know most people like to recommend this film without talking about the plot, and I won't talk too much about it either, but I really had to mention the kidnapping as I feel comparing this film with Room is like comparing an undercooked raw steak with a full course Thanksgiving meal. And I know for some of you that comparison might be unfair because of the budget differences, one having 20 times the budget than the other one, but keep in mind, a budget doesn't really make a movie. It's what gives you access to more resources, yes, of course, but it doesn't really necessarily make the movie itself. The content is truly what we're after. Room is wonderful, and it's it's really not what I'd call shocking or disturbing, but it does go into magnificent detail as to what the psychological damages a kidnapper, or rather the kidnappee and hostage situations can do to someone, as well as the violation they go through, all while not exploiting or glorifying the brutal details these sort of cases and movies often do. I really love it. Check it out. <sighs> Anyways, guys, this is long. Holy shit. I'm really sorry about that. I just really like talking about movies. And if you liked my opinion or if you think I should talk more about horror films, please leave a comment down below. I'm not sure if I can because these often don't get that many views, but I'll still try if you guys give this a like and you subscribe and all that good stuff. Anyways, I love you guys a ton. Thank you so much for sticking to the end. I'll see you guys later. Good night, everyone. Love y'all.